Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday's live stream. We've got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. First, uh, as you may tell by the thumbnail and title today, we're going to be talking about Donald Trump. And I got to tell you, if there's, if there's two things to alienate friends and family that you can talk about, one would be religion, and the second one would be politics. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into the political side of crypto. Now, on this channel, it's, it's apolitical. I don't really care who really wins because in my personal opinion, all politicians are uh, pretty much a bunch of liars. Let's just be honest. But uh, this kind of struck my attention and I'm going to tell you why. So I actually posted this on Twitter and I had to ask, I said, I had to ask, is this actually AI? Because when I was going through it, it kind of seemed a little herky-jerky and it didn't seem real. But apparently... <laughs> This is actually happening. So Donald Trump, uh, if you don't remember, was our president before Joe Biden took over. And of course, you can cheer or boo in the comment section. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, that's fantastic. But uh, before he did these, these NFT releases, and uh, now he is doing, <laughs> he's doing it again. And I got to tell you, when I'm taking a look at this, it's just amazing to me. And like, I'm not going to play the video. I don't want to get copyrighted or anything like that. But uh it's pretty much he's saying like, look, you buy these cards, they're an NFT collection. If you do like 40, here, I'm just gonna click on buy now and I'll show you what this is. And of course you can sign in, you can use like an email and I think you can do something with your bank account. I'm not for sure, but it says here, external wallet connect with wallet. And it's gonna ask me for my MetaMask wallet. Now, I'm not gonna buy it, but I just think it's very interesting that the former president of the United States and probably the one who's gonna be the front runner for the Republican party, I can only assume is uh, going this route. And I think it's interesting because before, let's be honest, Trump was not a big crypto supporter and Biden is not a big crypto supporter. Let's just let's just put it out there. But I found this interesting that first he's, he's doing that again with the NFT cards. So he sees that there is value in using Ethereum ERC-20 contracts, if that's the one that he's actually going on to. From what I see, it actually looks like it is. But it makes me wonder. And this is where we where, where it comes from. Former U.S. President Donald Trump may change crypto stance dramatically, says ex-SEC official. And when I tell you who this, this guy is, it's going to make some sense. And it's not Gary. It's the ex-SEC. So the U.S. SEC's commission's former head of Internet Enforcement says former U.S. President Donald Trump's anti-crypto stance may change dramatically. Now, this could all be if he gets into office or not. I know some people of you, some you hate Donald Trump and some of you love Donald Trump. I'm not here to debate that. I'm just saying if he does get in, eh, maybe his stance might have changed. Republican appointed SEC chair would at a minimum approve a Bitcoin exchange traded fund and may even slow down considerably the SEC crypto related enforcement efforts. Let me read that again because I went a little too fast. The SEC's former head of Internet Enforcement, who is Republican, I believe, states if Trump gets in and if he has a Republican, of course, he will say, hey, look, the SEC has got a couple Democrats in here. Let's make this a Republican appointed. A Republican appointed SEC chair would, at a minimum, approve a Bitcoin ETF, which may or may not be approved. I know people are saying it's 99% there, but who knows, and may even slow down considerably SEC crypto-related enforcement efforts. And that's pretty hefty. I mean, the SEC is on a rampage suing everybody. That's, for, that's just the truth. And just to kind of put this in perspective, to appoint an SEC chair, who would that be? Well, just so you know, you got five. The head is Gary Gensler. We all know him. And he's a Democrat, apparently. And uh, he was part of uh, Clinton's campaign, I believe. He was a part of uh, a couple other ones as far as Democrats. I want to say that's Hillary Clinton, not, uh, not Bill. And uh, you've got Mark Ueda, who's a Republican. Caroline Crenshaw is a Democrat. Hester Pierce, who we all know is crypto mom, is a Republican. And Jaime Lizarraga is a Democrat. So you got three Democrats and two Republicans. So if this happens, maybe there could be a switch. Just saying. Now here's who said it. Former U.S. SEC official John Reed Stark has argued that former President Donald Trump could dramatically change his position. Former President Trump is on record as being strongly anti-Bitcoin and anti-crypto. True. Crypto voters might be one issue voters. Excuse me. Crypto voters might be the one issue that voters have a powerful message and passionate constituency. So perhaps former President Trump will change his crypto tune dramatically. It's amazing how that works out. A lot of people want you to go one way and you're a politician. Sometimes you do it. 
So if you don't know who Mr. Stark is, this is John Reed Stark. And he is uh, presently the president of John Reed Stark Consulting, LLC, Senior Lecturing Fellow, Duke University School of Law, former chief SEC Office of Internet Enforcement. And let me tell you right now, <laughs> I follow John. He is no fan of crypto. I would go so far as to say that he dislikes crypto. And this is one of his posts on December 4th, trying to explain why Bitcoin's price continues to rise is like trying to describe the clothing worn by poltergeists. For crypto, there's no value, there's no cash flow, there's no yield, there's no employees, there's no management, there's no balance sheet. December 4th. So for him to come out and say, yeah, I think Trump could actually change his tune because of the constituents, there's some weight to that, I have to say. And of course, for me, I retweeted that. I said, hey, John, don't be salty because you didn't buy enough. Come on, John. And John, of course, put this back to me. So I at least had a good chuckle out of that one. So uh, that's where we're going. Again, I'm not saying that someone's going to be approved a president or not. Sound off in the comment section. I'm just saying that if this does happen, eh, I prefer Hester Pierce over Gary Gensler. Anyhow, let me just want to think about that. Also, on top of the uh, Bitcoin ETF news, the good news keeps coming. Uh, Laura Shin, journalist, says uh, a revised BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF filing will now allow large U.S. banks to act as authorized participants for the funds. I've said this for many a, a year now, at least, at least a year, two years, that the banks... We've seen a 40% reduction in brick and 30, no, 35% reduction in brick and mortar banks across the United States. Why is that? It's because they didn't, the banks aren't really needed so much. They're consolidating. They're actually losing money. And in some of those those lower tier banks, they're actually going out of business. So for me, when I see something like this, I'm like, this only this only makes sense. This is a way for them to make money. Now I'm not telling you that this is the way that it should be, that we should be going through banks for an ETF. I'm just saying this is the way it's gonna be. Because there's two different things out there. Some people are gonna do cold wallet storage, write down the amount of devices, and that's fine. That's exactly what I do, actually. But there's gonna be a, another group is like, oh, I can't do that, and I need someone to do it because I'm helpless. I'm not saying they're helpless. I just need it because I just don't understand this other, other part, and I'm gonna have to kind of piecemeal them in. So for that, hey, as long as the umbrella is big enough, I'll welcome anybody who wants to come in. So that's a positive. I think if uh, the banks are coming in and say, hey, you want a piece of this, then sure. We'll offer this to our customers, more adoption, so much the better. Now, if it actually collapses, that's on them. That's why I do cold storage. On top of that, in El Salvador, the volcano bond gets the green light and it's set for Q1 of 2024. So if you don't know, especially, essentially El Salvador is using the geothermal energy uh, to run Bitcoin miners and they're gonna have a fund which is going to be available. I don't know if this is available worldwide and to U US investors, I'm not 100% for sure. Regardless, it's still a step in the right direction. People, people can invest into Bitcoin, albeit uh, a step away, not the directly, but I think it gives them exposure just like people get exposure to MicroStrategy and also to other Bitcoin miners like Mara and Riot. And again, the timing is impeccable, Q1 of 2024. I like that. You know why I like that? because obviously that's when the Bitcoin having is. This was a post I, I uh, wanted to share with everybody as a, as a, as a piece of, of retrospect. This is from Coinmetrics. And they said that uh, in 2024, we'll be on the largest and longest crypto bull run yet. Boy, I hope they're right. And I just like to remember to hear these numbers because it, we sometimes forget 2012 halving, at the 2012 halving, you know, Bitcoin was 11 bucks in 2012. Then roughly a year later, it was $1,100. That's a pretty good gain. 2016, the halving, Bitcoin was 650 bucks. And then it rocketed all the way to 20,000 in 2017. In 2020, it was pretty high. I remember this, 8,800. And we still went to 69,000. So everybody's excited and they have, they have jubilation about what's happening and the price appreciation. This isn't anything. We're not even at the halving yet. That's not going to happen for like four more months. January, February, March. We got like roughly four months or so. So if you think these prices are amazing, uh, just wait. I think it's going to be a, a big run up. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to go to a million or 100,000 or maybe even an all-time high. I can't say that. But I'm just saying I think we're in the appreciation stage. And that's why I've been investing for quite some time. So there is uh, the good news. Let's switch to not so moon boyish because in this channel, I don't want you to be like, 
okay, this is, it's a lock. It's going to happen. Honey, sell the house. Kidneys are gone. Sell those kids. We need more money for Bitcoin. It doesn't work like that. Keep Put everything in perspective because it all doesn't really work like we think it's going to work. I came across this photo from cowboy.crypto. And this is Gary, for some reason, sweating like crazy. And uh, it says, remember when, G when Gensler's daughter worked for Elizabeth Warren? And I, I'm like, oh, I didn't, that's why they're so close. That's why I always see that picture of him and her talking. I don't know how close they are now, but it seems to be the kind of, kind of that way. And we know that uh, Senator Warren just put out a piece of legislation, a bill that pretty much is going to do away with self-custody and really her crypto digital assets. Now, before everybody says, but Rob, she's put out like 300 different bills or 400 different bills and zero have passed. I got to tell you, if you're a senator and you put out all those bills and, not, none, of them, and none of them passed, are you really doing your job? I don't know if that's really how it works unless they just use her for, you know, to actually vote on things. Again, not here for politics, but it seems kind of weird that you're a politician and one of your jobs is to, to vote on bills and to, and to uh, put in bills to help the constituents in your state and you're 0 for 452 or something like that. That's a hell of a batting average and it's awful. Regardless, this thing makes me, gives me pause. This is from uh, John Deaton and for the XRP community, they know exactly who this is. And he says, her, let me build this up. Her bill is a big deal. Nine U.S. senators have joined her. So I know everybody's talking about like, she'll never get it through. But hey, nine senators have joined her. You get two senators per state. We got 50 states, that's 100. I know it's not that much, but they've already joined her. So maybe there's something behind that, including Republicans and independents. And as a reminder, Elizabeth Warren is a Democrat. As I've said, if you're taking a, talking about people, Elizabeth Warren is, in the, is the single biggest threat to crypto in the United States. It's not Gensler because Gensler takes his marching orders from Warren. And I was like, that's not true. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe it could be. So we'll see how this all works out moving in the future. A lot of people said that the, the ETF is 99% approved. I, for one, hope it's approved. And I really, I know there's gonna be a massive amount of money or a good amount of money that's gonna come in. It could be a buy the rumor, sell the news. But even if it's not, I just wanna tell everybody, the narrative is already there. The massive amount of, of, of money and funds that are actually here, like the Black Rocks, the Fidelities, and everybody else, you got trillions of assets under management and it's saying we want Bitcoin. And the reason why we want Bitcoin is not because of us personally, it's because of our clients want Bitcoin. The narrative's already there. So it's not a question of, of when, or not a question of if, excuse me. It's a question of when. And uh, I think we're on the right track, even if things don't really work out. Let me know you think about that story in the comment section. And then lastly, there are some things that actually are, uh, are, are interesting and still gives me perspective and a little bit of uh, positivity for politicians. This is uh, Rostin Benham, and he is the acting chair of the CFTC. And what he said on Squawk Box, this was a couple of days ago. I took a couple of days off. I've been doing some other things. And this is about a minute or so. I want you to listen to this because he's for the commodities, right? And I always thought there was like a big discourse between the SEC and the CFTC and really what it was. But just listen to this piece that he says here. Let me, let me make sure you can hear this the right way. I want this, I want this crystal clear as far as audio goes. Just take a listen, about a minute. Andrew's gonna ask him a question. There's a lot of focus on stable coins. What did you see as the distinction between the way you think about crypto and the way Gary Gensler thinks about crypto? Well, you know, we have the products trading on our markets, and I think really, and we've talked about this in the past, it, it's a matter of what is the investor, what is the buyer of the tokens getting with its purchase of a token, whether it's Bitcoin, Ether, or anything else. And, you know, I, I've, I've said this very clearly, I've said it many times, I stick to what we have as the legal precedent and what we're seeing on our markets. And, you know, under existing law, many of the tokens constitute commodities. And under this rubric, there is a gap in regulation and I need Congress to step in. And the fact of the matter is we've literally been talking about this for years and we still don't have a regulated environment right. or a regulated it's, entity. It's crazy. But like when <laughs> it is crazy and it's not going to move any faster because Congress moves uh, at the speed of smell, I swear. But uh, 
there you go right there from the CFTC chair. He's saying essentially like, look, from the guidelines that we have right now and what's in place, most of these cryptos that are out there are a commodity. And that's where me and Gary Gensler uh, disagree. And he's going to go on and say that, uh, you know, we don't have issues and we don't fight. But of course, he's just saying that. Uh, I would assume that they, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a turf war just a little bit because they want a little bit of control over those sections. But again, uh, I know people will say it's an open and shut case. It's, it's definitely a security. Well, here's a gentleman here that says, and he's in the right position to, to, to give us some information. Yes, they are commodities. So again, it gives me a little bit of hope about, about that moving forward. So all the things we talk about, eh, things again, looking pretty positive. Then to finish up, just want to uh, have people aware of this. I put this tweet out about Ledger. And it was a uh, researcher finds data harvesting inside Ledger Live app. And really what it comes down to is this. There is a screen. If you have a Ledger, a Ledger, I don't know what they're doing for the data and the analytics. Some people have said that the data that they're collecting is just in-house and they're doing that because they want to be aware of what functions well and what doesn't function well. So what, then the, when they have the different upgrades that come in, they can fix the bugs and that's why they're uh, asking for this analytics. And some people on the other side will say, no, no, they're asking for this analytics because they're tracking everything that you do and all the different clicks and they're reporting it to the whatever, the CIA, whatever you want to say. But I'm just saying it doesn't really matter because if if you have Ledger and you have Ledger Live, just go to the settings and you can turn it off. And for some reason, like I don't turn these on automatically, but when I took a look at the settings and it's under analytics right here, analytics, enable analytics to help Ledger improve user experience. This includes clicks, page visits, redirections, blah, 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 blah. And it was on. So you can turn it off. This is just a PSA. I'm not going to you know, say anything negative about Ledger. It's just, that's just what it is. Maybe it's on, maybe it's not. Mine was on. A couple people told me that theirs was on, just so you're aware. <clears throat> on top of that, <coughs> excuse me, there's another article which uh, other developers have said, yeah, uh, the same thing happens in MetaMask, the same thing happens in Avalanche, and it's all right there. In MetaMask, you can also turn those settings off. <clears throat> Avalanche, that just happens in the background. So to me, it just comes down, down to like this. Like if you're doing anything, any transactions online, pretty much the data that you have there, they're gonna take anyhow. If they want your data, they're gonna get your data. And even as good as Ledger is, I will remind everybody, there has been no hack for Ledger whatsoever, except for your personal data. That did get slipped through, yes, that is true. But uh, that has, has had no hacks on your crypto. Me personally, I just use a Tangem. I use Tangem, Ledger, and Elipal. And some people like Trezor and some other things, but. Those are the three that I use, but uh, that's all we have. And uh, just wanted to clear that up. And then lastly, lastly, Bonk. <laughs> it's one of my, I think this is the this is the doge corner of the cycle because it's built on Solana. It's down 12%. It was actually down like 24%, which is, uh, yeah. this is another another uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. Uh, Coinbase just came out 17 hours ago and said, hey, good news, we just listed Bonk. Everybody knew they were going to list Bonk like two days ago. So everybody bought it up, it pumped, and now it's down whatever it is, but it's actually recovering. So another thing that's just happened, buy the rumor, sell the news, be aware, that's a real thing. And then before we get into the Q&A, just as a quick reminder, I just did another Dan Degen video. So if Bonk isn't risky enough for you as a meme coin, here's some other risky stuff. And this is the ones that, I don't even put this on this channel uh, because it's super risky. It's why I call it Dan Degen, but it's a launch pad. It's called Tencent. I've been talking about this quite, uh, quite a bit. And I'm talking about why I'm using it, the new projects that they're launching, how you get in early, how the token looks. And we just go over a, a deep dive. And actually, uh, there is a tweet. There's a link in the description for the video and for the tweet. I just, this, this tweet just went live two hours ago. And I'm actually giving away 5,000 Tencent tokens to five lucky winners. That means it's a thousand per winner. Let me do some quick math. A thousand times. Yeah, that's right which is like uh, five, 600 bucks, somewhere around there because the, the token's worth like 60 cents right now. It used to be worth $6.50, so I'm just saying. That could be pretty big as time goes on. All you gotta do is watch the deep dive video, follow News Asset, follow Tencent, retweet the post, and I'll do a live drawing next week for everybody who wants to get in. But again, video is out. Check that launch pad out. Again, super risky, but that's it for our day. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.